Welcome back to part 1, section 2 of SketchUp NVIDIA Tutorials. For those of you who are still following the tutorials, very good. And I hope you've made your own model already. If not, you can download the model from the description below. And if you do have any questions related to SketchUp modeling, please do let me know in the comments below so that I can address them. Thank you. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to create rounded edges or corners in SketchUp. So in order to create rounded edges or corners in SketchUp, there are actually many ways to create them. But I'm just going to show you the two methods I find helpful and I use them actually. So these are the two methods I use. So the first one is I click on L at the corner and I go and I extend and I actually draw a line to the amount of radius I need for my corners. For example, I'm just going to draw 50 millimeters here. I've got 50 millimeters there. Then I draw another 50 millimeters vertically after that. And I let that be. And then I click on C. From that point on, I create a circle and I snap it to the end of it. So you create a circle. So the moment you create a circle, you see, you, you'll be able to see these uh, hard edges of circles. In order to avoid that, you can just hold down control and keep clicking on plus repeatedly until you reach the number of segments you're comfortable with. So yeah, I'm just gonna leave it there. Yeah. So now, what we're gonna do is erase the outer bits. So erase that, erase that, and erase that, and that. So there you go, you have a rounded edge a corner so that's the first method I use and the second method is I use an extension so this extension is called create radius and in order to install extensions in SketchUp you'll have to go to the window tab and click on extension manager and then install install extension by the way you can download the create radius extension from the description below and if you have it in your downloads folder just install it just click on the .rbz file and open it and it should be installed and ready to go and if not you can just just make sure that all your extensions are enabled in, in, in order for them to work all right so that's how you actually enable them and so now through the extension tab I'm just gonna go to create radius then right click radius tool settings set it to 50 let that be 50 number of settings i don't i don't generally touch them unless i'm doing some really large uh, radiuses so yeah just click on okay select your first line and then select your second line and you should have a curved corner there must be some thing actually missing underneath which is why uh, surface but it's not it's not a big issue actually you can just draw it should it should actually work out if you draw it snap it on the right point or maybe not ah there you go there you have it another rounded corner method and you can obviously reverse the face by right clicking it so there you have it so that's the first tip that i wanted to give you in order to actually carry out detailed modeling so after you've created the rounded edges for your top slabs we are now going to move on to creating some light bulbs actually bulb holders so in order to create bulb holders I'm just going to double click on my uh, roof group as I've grouped my as I've spoken about the grouping methods earlier on so I've actually grouped everything up and so I'm just going to double click on that and in order to create proper light bulbs easily all you have to do is click on C draw a circle of certain radius the radius that you require for example 50 millimeters and instantly after drawing that you can click on control add some segments to it and then you double click on that it selects that make it a group straight away and again double click and enter that group and you extrude that 
backwards sorry you control extrude that means you're going upwards delete that phase then you extrude that a little more reverse phase and click on F okay, I'm just gonna go with 10 millimeters there okay. then again extrude that part control extrude and just keep that there that looks like it's, it's got hard edges again you can get rid of the hard edges with that control plus the moment you create circles but that's how you generally if you come out of that so look at that you can actually move that around in order to get see I, I can move that anywhere I feel like and I can place it anywhere in the model without any problem actually so that's how easily you can create bulb holders in SketchUp so after you're done with the bulb holders we have to still think of the flooring how on earth are you gonna create the flooring after you've modeled everything you must be wondering oh uh, well again I use an extension for my flooring because uh, cutting out everything and drawing lines I find them quite a tedious job and I and I heavily believe in finishing things quickly so I just use technology I mean whatever is available in the internet extensions so in this extension this extension is called flow generator again you'll find this extension in the description below an amazing extension through which you can create different patterns of flooring and I find this extension extremely helpful so yes so I'm just gonna explain how to use this extension properly over here so the moment you click on this button over here flow generator is called flow generator so you've got tiles you've got bricks wood so you'll have to check everything out so I'm I, there, there are a lot of options actually so I'm just gonna go with tiles and 600 by 600 millimeters I'm just gonna keep the gap to be hairline gap so that it's not that visible so these are the options for where it's going to origin so it's going to be corners and it's going to leave that over there uh, texture size I don't want I currently I'm not dealing with texture at the moment so I'll get back to you with the texture in the next section or the next part of this tutorial I'm sorry and then no randomness so, so no random rotation so no on that and what all you have to do is click on the four and it should generate proper flooring for you and it's already in a group for you and they're in individual groups again in order to keep them in individual groups actually you have to make sure you check this button over here create individual groups or else they'll be broken inside one entire group so this is another tip and an extension for you you can use in order to create floorings in SketchUp easily so once the flooring is done uh, you just have to model up your sink again the same method of intrusion and extrusion all you need is the measurements so the measurement for the sink is I think 400 yeah so it's 400 by 400 millimeters and then you extrude intrude in order to get the sink done it's a, it's a simple model because if you look at the picture you cannot exactly make out the sink properly from the picture so yes so another thing I want to address is that if you look carefully we are almost as close as to the picture in terms of modeling so things you can see in the picture is this pillar cupboards the entire modular kitchen and the bulb holders and the wall beside it so we need to start placing our camera and other items like the oven and a few plants or any things that could add to the kitchen accessories and then obviously the tap of here so these are the few things that's missing in your kitchen so let's get to that I'll show you how you can do that and set up the camera and in the next part we can look at uh, materials texturing UV mapping using V-Ray and eventually the rendering process alright then in order to 
actually create models in your SketchUp. You, it's going to take a long time if you want to create a tap or any other models, so a flower pot or something. So there's an option in V-Ray 5.1 where they've they've actually given us the option for uh, downloading high quality models through Chaos Cosmos. I think everyone's quite aware of this. Chaos Cosmos is actually a place for extremely high quality models. I mean, the models are text already. You can just place them directly on your screen and you don't, you don't even have to bother about the materials used in that because everything is just perfectly UV mapped and everything. And so yeah, so I'm just gonna use a few things from Cosmos. So yeah, so in order to pull out Cosmos, you'll have to click on, you, you need to have your V-Ray extensions, by the way, enabled in order to have your V-Ray stuff seen over here. So yeah, so click on this, this is Chaos Cosmos. And then I'm gonna go to 3D models, uh, accessories. Mm, I've got a few stuff here. Accessories, what did I have in my, what, are, what did they have? Uh, so they have a flat pot, a tap, ah oh, there, they have a tap there. So I'm just going to download that, um, mine is already downloaded since I did the render earlier on already. So yeah, downloaded, untitled, I don't know which, so let's just delete that. Yeah, untitled. See, immediately you have the model floating so you, all you have to do is just place it over there really nothing else and the model is ready to go to be honest which we'll be discussing in the next part again let's just go back to cosmos again look for something else uh, let's look for a flower pot shall we right, so go to vegetation indoor plants mm, there you go beautiful flower pot Again, untitled. I'm just gonna place that there. Don't worry about how it looks. It's basically uh, what do you call that? It's basically you save memory. That's what it looks like. And then let's look for some accessories, furniture, bedroom, tables, chairs, accessories decoration yeah let's let's look into decoration and you can put that click on escape in order to get rid of that and then hmm where's the Here's the model that I'm looking for. Uh, anyway, I'm just going to copy it from my previous model. And these are the models I actually used. You can use, you can have a look at the Chaos Cosmos library. They have. Uh, a lot of items, ready-made items, this can be used. So yeah, so your model looks almost ready. All we need is the oven. The oven that I use is from 3D Warehouse actually. Yeah, so I'm just gonna place that there. Again, do not waste your time modeling these things. I mean, there there's a huge library out there and you can save a ton of time to spy there's a lot of free downloadable stuff which is really good you don't need to exactly make everything if you're especially on a tight schedule okay so just place that there move it a bit maybe yeah so yeah looks fine right there now the camera how do you place cameras in sketchup so first set up the way you want it yeah so i like it there so the moment you have that there set up right click on the toolbar and switch on the camera options there should be a camera option here. oh there you go switch make sure that's on and that looks like something like this and click on add camera so it creates a physical camera with real world camera parameters 
so you click on that so last view camera one so you can name that camera yes so let that i'm just gonna i'm just gonna be let that be camera one now yeah so if, if you look on the left hand side you've got a few options in camera if you right click on the left hand side edit camera you can do a number of things so i generally mess around the uh, focal length so you can set it to 45 and click on enter so it basically helps you adjust the entire scene so don't worry about setting up the camera right now so i'm just going to lock it right there so you can if you lock the camera you can move around without any problem but if you do not lock it what happens is if you unlock the camera the camera moves with you basically so you must always have this practice of locking your camera right click lock camera and you can move around anywhere you like and the camera scene is stored over there so the so in order to get back to your camera view you just have to click on camera one ACD locked on this one and it goes back there yeah it looks good to me and I'm just going to end the tutorial over here so yes if you would like to further continue and look at my materials texturing I highly recommend the next video in which I will be texturing uh, the entire model of here I'm gonna be discussing a few cam camera parameters using V-Ray and also after that in, in later stages we're gonna finally render this scene all right thank you for joining in this video hope to see you in the next video there should be a pop-up coming up right now in the middle of the screen so click on that to go to get to the next part of this tutorial series. Thank you once again.